Hey there, John Morris here with JohnMorrisOnline.com, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to build an accordion with jQuery. So it's specifically inside of this course, I'm going to show you how to create an accordion effect. I'm going to show you how to slide up, slide down panels, how to target using selectors and a various number of other jQuery fundamentals that if you're learning jQuery, you want to make sure and learn and understand. Now this course is sponsored by the Use Ajax Easily with jQuery and PHP course over on Udemy.com. And the reason I like this course is because it helps you to take your jQuery skills to another level by using them with Ajax. And doing that sort of thing is kind of the magic of the web. A lot of the really cool things that you see people do on the internet, the really advanced things that you see people doing with jQuery and JavaScript often involve Ajax. And so when you learn how to use Ajax with jQuery, you can do some really cool things and you up your value as a developer, most importantly, and allows you to, whether you're working with clients, be able to charge what you want, whether you're working for a company, being able to ask for that raise, or whether you're building some sort of application, be able to build an application that's incredibly user-friendly and allows you to outcompete the people that are in your market. So learning how to use Ajax with jQuery is a huge bonus and something you'll definitely want to do. And this course teaches you how to do that. Now you'll see a link down below this video where you can access that course. Be sure to use that link to get the best price for the course. All right, now let's go ahead and dive in to this tutorial. So over here on the right side, we'll first take a look at what we're actually building. So you can see I have this paneled accordion looking thing over here. And if we click one of these links, then you can see the one that was open slides up and this one here slides down and it gives kind of an accordion effect where the actual overall size of the box here doesn't change, but the individual panels kind of slide up and slide down. So this is what we you know, call an accordion. This is your standard accordion effect. And you've probably seen this before on some web website. So here's how to do it. So over here on the left in the code, you'll see that we have our standard doc type here. We have our HTML tag, our head tag, all standard things. We have our title tags, and then we have our style tag. Now, as always, I include this all in one file. So it's a little bit easier for you to access. You just have one file to access. You don't have a bunch of uh, files that you have to dig through. Normally, though, you would put this in some sort of style.css file and include it as a link. But it's all here. There's nothing that's special about this. This is You can see this is just basic styling over here. None of the actual functionality. Sometimes with jQuery, the uh, functionality, there's things in CSS that affect the functionality. In this particular case, that's not true. This is all just kind of basic styling. So I'm not going to go through this. Uh, it's very, very basic and doesn't affect what we're actually going to be covering here. And you could style this really however you want. Now, that brings up a good point. A lot of people ask me how to get access to the source code. You can get access to the source code. Uh, I obviously can't upload it here on YouTube, but it's available over on my website. At the end of this video, I will show you exactly how to get access to this source code. So be sure to stay tuned to the end if you're after the source code. All right, so uh, we have our JavaScript and our jQuery here. We'll go ahead and skip that for a second and come down here to the HTML. So inside of our body tag here, you can see we have a definition list. Now, a definition list works really well for this, but you don't have to use a definition list. You could use any sort of other element and just style it appropriately. Um, but again, for this particular thing, a definition list works pretty well. So that's why we use it. So we give our definition list a class of accordion so we can target then we have our definition title, which is this panel one. You can see over here, each one of these has a, uh, a title here. And we wrap that inside of an anchor tag. And so we need that so that these are, when you hover over these, you can see they're kind of clip clickable here. 
So this anchor tag allows these to show up as clickable and allows them to be easier to target when we're targeting them with our jQuery. All right, so that's our title. And then our actual content here, our description, this is the thing that kind of slides up and slides down. So you'll see this is the box that we're actually sliding up and sliding down with jQuery. All right, so all of these, each one of these elements or each one of these uh, kind of li list items here is the is the same except we've just changed this to panel two and changed the text inside of it a little bit but structure wise the html is all the same so these panels are exactly the same of course you could put whatever you wanted inside of each one of these and then we're closing our definition list our body tag and our html so this is a very standard straightforward definition list nothing special about this at all so all the magic happens up here inside of the JavaScript. So the first thing that you can see that we're doing here is we're including jQuery because we're going to use jQuery. So we need to use that. I'm using the Google CDN, pretty standard way of doing it. There are other CDNs or you can include a local copy. Uh, for tutorials, I like to use the CDN. So that way when you install it, it just works. Uh, you don't have to uh, download a local copy or anything like that. All right. So then we start our stip, uh, script tags. And we're doing our jQuery document dot ready function. So this is the standard way that you wrap all your jQuery so that it starts working. It waits to start working until the DOM is ready, essentially. So it's not going to try and start running before everything's ready. All right. So this is again just standard way that you you always do this. Then the first thing that we're going to do, you'll notice if I reload this, that by default the first panel is what's open now that's optional and we'll cover that in a second but to start what we're doing is we're setting uh, we're we're getting our descriptions essentially into a variable called panels so we're calling these descriptions in here these areas that are sliding up and down panels so you can see we're targeting that with accordion and then dd okay so we're, we're setting them as a variable, and then you can see here in jQuery, when you set the variable, you can also apply a method to it in that. So it's, it's shorthand, essentially. You know, if you were to do this explicitly, you'd set this variable, and you would stop, essentially, right here. And then you would come down here and do panels.hide. That would do the exact same thing as what we're doing here. But as I said, this is just shorthand. Um, so we're, we're setting this, uh, these uh, descriptions to this panels variable and we're simultaneously hiding them. All right, so that sets that up. That hides all of the panels. So that's the first thing that happens is actually all of these descriptions are hidden. And then what we're doing is we are optionally, you can see this is optional, we're targeting the first one and we're showing it. So we're using our variable we just set, which is set to our our uh, descriptions here panels dot first so the first one so if we reload this first one dot show so the first panel we want to show again this is optional if you were to comment this out then when you load this page they would all just be hidden like this okay so it depends how you want to do that but I wanted to show you how to open the first one. And of course, you don't have to do the first one. You could do the second one, the third one. You could target whichever one you want. All right, so we hide them all. Then we show the first one. And then on the click of a panel title, so whenever one of these is clicked, then what we're going to do, so you can see we have accordion, definition title, a tag, like I talked about earlier, makes this easy to target. Click, function. so then we're going to do an anonymous function and so the first thing we're going to do inside here is we're going to set our this variable. So this is set to the element. This right here is a jQuery kind of standard. You can target whatever element was uh, clicked essentially in this case using this right here, uh, this shorthand or whatever. So what we do is we set that to a variable because when you do this part right here, it always it goes back into the DOM to find it. Whereas when you set it as a variable, it doesn't have to do that, and so it just helps with performance. In this case, we're only using it once, so it actually doesn't help us any, but it's a, it's a best practice and a standard way that you want to write your jQuery, get used to writing it, 
because if we started to use this multiple times, then that's when we start saving ourselves performance, when we start helping ourselves performance-wise. So just get in the habit of doing this every time. All right, so we set that. That Now what we're going to do is we're going to target our panels. So remember, panels was sent to all of our descriptions here. So when one of these is clicked, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to slide up all the panels. So essentially, we're sliding up all the other ones. So you'll notice that all uh, the only one that's open, or if we click this one, this one slides down. Now, this one was already slid down, so it does nothing. So that's what we're doing here. So we're, we're making sure all the other panels are closed. Then what we're going to do is we're going to target the one that was clicked, and we're going to slide it down. That's, that's the idea here. So slide up everything else, slide the one that was clicked down. The way we do that is we start with our this. So we start with our anchor tag that was clicked, and we get the parent. Now the reason we do that is, is you'll see the anchor tag here that was clicked. The parent of that is the definition title. So we need to get the parent first. Then we're going to go to the next, use next to go to the ne very next element. So parent gets us to definition title, next gets us to definition description. And that's what we want. So then we're going to slide that down. So we're going to apply the method slide down to that. So that allows us to target this definition description and slide it down. The reason we do it this way is because this will... This allows us to target the one, whichever one that was clicked. A lot of times what I see with beginning jQuery uh, coders is they'll want to, whenever this is clicked, and I did this, whenever this uh, element right here is clicked, they'll start kind of all the way back at the DOM tree, and they'll try to target this explicitly. And then what happens is you end up writing a lot of code because you have to, for each element that you have in this accordion that can be clicked, you're going back through and explicitly targeting from the very top of the DOM tree the, this description element. You don't have to do that. You can do, do it in a relative way, which is what this is. Get the parent of whatever was clicked, get the next very next element, and then slide that down. So this will actually apply to all three of these because we're targeting all three with our... Uh, the way that we're writing this out with this this statement okay so hopefully that makes sense if you're brand brand new it may not but as you go that'll start to make sense that we're not targeting this description element explicitly from the top of the dom tree and creating a chain from our click all the way through to it instead we're targeting it in a relative fashion because we know how our html is going to be laid out so the, the caveat with relative targeting like that, and I'm, I'm totally making up that phrase, but that's what makes sense to me. Uh, that relative targeting like that, the, the, the key with that is that your HTML has to then be written the same uh, all the time. So because you are a, making an assumption about the structure of your HTML. So you have to make sure you structure it that way every time. If you put in, let's say, a paragraph tag here. Let's put that in there then what would happen is this, the click of the A tag, the parent would be definition title, next would be the paragraph tag now. And so this slide down would be applied to this paragraph tag. So if you change your HTML structure, then you have to change your jQuery to match it. And you also have to make sure that your structure is then consistent across all the elements that you're going to target. So that's why these are all three laid out the exact same way. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Then once we've done all that, then we can do return false. And what that does is just make sure that the default behavior of the element that was clicked doesn't get applied. So these are anchor tags again. So it'll just make sure that that anchor tag, the default behavior of it clicking to some sort of URL or page uh, doesn't happen. All right, so it blocks it So because we're targeting it to do other things. All right, so that is how to build an accordion with jQuery. Now, if you're interested in the source code, be sure to stay tuned right now. Now, if you want to get access to this source code, then the way to do that is to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com 
slash resources or if you're on my website you can simply click the resources tab right up here and that will take you to my web developer resources page now i have a whole all kinds of web developer resources on here from classes to the different tools that i use but if you scroll down to the bottom here then you'll see a section called code snippets and you'll see php code snippets wordpress code snippets and genesis code snippets so you can go ahead and click on through to the code snippets that apply for the video you're watching and you'll be able to get access to th that code snippet now if we click here for example on php code snippets then we will be taken to that page and you'll see all of the different code snippets here and you can click through and you'll get the video you'll get the description and you'll get the code snippet as well so again head on over to johnmorrisonline.com resources head on down to the code snippet section to get access to the snippet that you're after. Of course, while you're here, you might as well look around and see some of the other developer tools and courses that I have available here that are going to help you down your path of becoming a web developer. And since I'm constantly adding to this page, then you might as well bookmark this page and check back often so you can see all of the things that I've added and get access to all of the tools and snippets and courses and things that I'm using throughout my career. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.